In this video we are going to demonstrate how to take an alginate impression correctly. Prior to taking your alginate impression you must ensure all your materials and instruments are ready. Here at the University of Manchester there are a variety of trays that we can choose from. The most commonly used are the president tray and the poly tray. In the event that adjustments are required to the tray wax will enable you to do so. Rose wax and ribbon wax are suitable to achieve these adjustments. Fully inform your patient and obtain verbal consent. Make sure you are clinically ready to take your alginate impression. Attach the handle to the stock tray ensuring that it is facing downward away from the lip. Before loading the tray, you must try it in the patient's mouth. Ensure that it has been fully seated and check the extensions of the tray, particularly in the buccal sulcus. In the instance that the handle of the stock tray is loose, you can use the alginate spatula to adjust the handle as shown here to achieve a more secure fit. Ensure the impression tray extends fully into the buccal sulcus on both sides. This will allow you to take a detailed impression that will include all the relevant landmarks. An underextended impression tray can be modified with the use of ribbon wax. This ribbon wax is moulded around the borders of the stock tray as shown here. A tray that is underextended will have insufficient detail and therefore produce an inaccurate impression. Then you can retry it back in the patient's mouth, making sure you are satisfied with the adjustments you've made. Note here the position of the tray handle. Notice how it points downwards and away from the patient's lip. Like as shown with the upper tray, the lower tray must also be tried in the patient's mouth before loading with the impression material. Particularly note the position of the tongue when the tray is fully seated. Border extension should also be noted. Ribbon wax is moulded in areas of the tray that are underextended. Examine the modified tray in the patient's mouth. Ask the patient to move their tongue as this can help you identify areas of interference. Tray adhesive called Fix is used to increase the adhesion between the impression material and the impression tray. Using a small brush, apply a thin uniform layer of Fix to both the upper and the lower trays. It is important to avoid applying too much tray adhesive. Using the compressed air from the 3 in 1 tip to dry the tray as demonstrated. Lukewarm water is measured according to manufacturer's instructions using the allocated measuring cup. Shake the container of alginate powder before starting as this will evenly distribute the constituents of the mixture. Measure out two scoops of alginate powder, levelling off the scoops using the alginate spatula. Replace the lid on the alginate box to make sure that it does not get water contaminated. Avoid condensing the alginate powder as this will change the properties of the material. When ready, pour the water into the mixing bowl containing the alginate powder and mix thoroughly. You need to work rapidly due to the limited work and time. The aim is to have a smooth mixture as demonstrated. Add the alginate to the tray in two stages as this will make sure that it is fully loaded. You should stand in front facing the patient whenever you are taking an impression of the lower arch. Fully seat the tray and as soon as you can ask the patient to stick out their tongue until it's fully protruded. Then get them to move it from side to side in functional movements. Use one hand to hold the tray in place and with the other hand move the cheek around so that you can get an impression of the buccal sulcus. It is very useful to retain some impression material on the back of your hand. When it is set, it will show no print of your fingernail. 
When the alginate material has hardened, you can remove the tray as it has now set. Any unsupported alginate should be removed. However, be careful you don't remove any important areas of detail. If needed, you can cut away any excess impression material. Thoroughly mix the alginate and load the upper tray. You can stand behind the patient to insert it. Make sure it is in the correct position and fully seated. If you happen to have a patient that has a sensitive gag reflex, you must explain fully the procedure. You need to reassure them and advise them that deep breathing through their nose particularly may help. To achieve a detailed impression, it is very important that you manipulate the lips and cheeks around the impression tray as the alginate impression is setting. Once set, then remove the tray and again any excess material should be removed prior to sending the impression to the laboratory. Before sending your impression to the lab, they must be cleaned and sterilised. Rinse them under water to remove saliva and then place them in hypochloride for 10 minutes only as alginate is dimensionally unstable. Wrap your finished impression in damp gauze. Pop it in a plastic resealable bag. Your impression is now ready for storage prior to sending to the lab. In clinical instances where excellent detail of the dentition is needed and where a sulcus impression is not important, for example splint construction or wax up or face bow, the following technique can prove useful. Roll two pieces of gauze and get the patient to bite down on their posterior teeth. Using another piece of gauze, wipe dry the dentition prior to applying the alginate directly to the occlusal surfaces. Insert a fully loaded alginate impression tray. Using a scalpel, remove any unsupported alginate. Disinfect your impression as shown previously and now it is ready to be sent to the lab.